And uh, I mean, I, I, this has only really recently come to the surface in terms of public discourse. So I mean, it happened, and the actual dismissal happened probably a year ago. But I think that, you know, this is this study. You know, it'd be interesting to see what happens. But I mean, it's obviously disgraceful. Um, I sort of, I, other than moral outrage, I can't really. So we talk different sort of outrage. No, I mean, you know, that fact plus, plus the fact that it didn't take a year and a half for it to come out. <laughs> well, I think I think the only I think the reason it came out just now was because the Middle Eastern Studies Association, of which Professor Quartet is, a, is an eminent member, finally got around to agreeing at a meet some one of its court, uh, forums to, to 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 write a kind of joint letter by a lot of prominent you know its prominent members to the Turkish uh, to the Turkish Prime Minister. You know, out outlining their protest against this, and some of the names, signatories to this letter were actually very interesting. Well, uh, uh, the letter which the Middle Eastern Studies letter wrote, uh, Association wrote to the Turkish Prime Minister, you know, amongst that, amongst some of the signatories were some of the more prominent deniers. All the way in the back. I wanted oh, to get back. Oh. Oh. That's okay, Barbara. Go ahead. I wanted to get back to the great powers. Um, you trace the role of Great Britain up until World War I very clearly. But I'm wondering, once 1914 came, could Great Britain have done anything different? I mean, after all, it was the Lipoling. They tried very hard to defeat Turkey. Seems to me they were not in a position then to do anything, and that really Germany was the only power that really was in a position to do anything. Now, I'm not trying to compare responsibility, but was there anything Great Britain could have done differently at that point? Thank you. Yeah, sure, sure. 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 Yeah. I, get, I guess you must have all heard that. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. I'm not sure. uh, is there anything else that Great Britain could have done during the war to to to, to ameliorate what was going on? In, 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 no. But no. I mean, beyond. I mean, I, I suppose more the more funds that were provided to. You know, re you know, relatively well-disposed Arab tribes. You know, more money that could have been possibly channeled through um, you know, the Russian authorities into the, for refugees in the Caucasus. I mean, there's a, a fairly famous instance, I think, in late 1915, when um, the British actually, you know, they do give some money, but are reluctant to give more uh, because they can't publicly publicly um, advertise that they're giving it. You know, if it's going through sort of clandestine funds there, they don't want the, want the Ottoman Empire to find out about this. They can't advertise it so it can't serve the propaganda purpose of you know, Britain helping the starving Armenians. You know, that, sort of, that level of kind of helping the victims, a little more could have been done. But in terms of the, the big politics, no. I mean, in, in the damage Britain has done in that sense has, has, has been done probably years ago by that point. Russia, I think, probably still does a little bit of damage even earlier into the war, but that's a different story. But yeah, I mean, Germany's the, the big player at that point. One, two. One, two, please. Yeah, all right. No? Okay, fair. Uh, I can clearly see the United States' interest in not recognizing the genocide uh, in their interest in Turkey today. Uh, could you tell me what is England's interest right now in that region that not, uh, they are not recognizing the genocide. Uh, did you all get that? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Um, the, the question I could see the, um, the United States' interest in um, placating Turkey in the present um, as regards the genocide issue. Record. Well, why, why, why does Britain still have that position of Still, why does it still share the American position even though, I mean, well the answer is it's still, I mean, the, the, most of the answer is the, the, the close identification of British foreign policy with American foreign yeah. policy. I mean, there's, you know, that's, that's really been there in one form or another since 1945 and, and with fluctuations. And, and um, yeah, I think, I think that's 90% that's of the answer. I mean, that there are definitely important trading contracts that are, you know, significant in this too. You know, Turkey is a very substantial market. Um, um, yeah, yeah. And I think there are, there are also, you yeah, know, within Britain there are some voices who I think are, are being, I mean, I think are, are probably, mis I think they're misguided, but I think, I think they're being genuine in saying that this is something with which, you know, we don't, we, we no longer have a role in. Unfortunately, I wish they discovered before the genocide they shouldn't have a role in messing around other people's affairs, but 
I think you know the, the subsequent. I think you know, amongst some voices, there is a, you know at least a genuine concern that British intervention over the issue of recognition will do more harm than good. But, you know, I think a lot of these third party things, if, you know, it's 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 a problem. It's a problematic idea because of course. The Ottoman Empire, I mean, Turkey has become so sensitized to external intervention in its affairs as a result of the factors we've been talking about that, you know, this issue of kind of genocide recognition in the present day can effectively seem like, you know, external red powers beating Turkey over the head again, you know, which is a terribly unfortunate legacy of, of the whole relationship dynamic in the first place. But, but as I say, the majority of the answer would revolve around, you know, Brit Brit Britain, you know, still sticking to the tenets of foreign policy that it more or less established, but now someone else has entirely taken over. Okay, we have a couple more. Uh, one, two, three. You're going to get my intent for. Roger, why don't you go? All right. Yeah, I, I wanted to go back to what George had brought. Why wait for the train? Sure. <laughs> I should hop on. Um, I, I'm interested in the occupation of Cilicia. The British were occupied after the, 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 the British and then the French occupied afterwards, they, they exchanged. Um, the Armenians, it's a sensitive topic for Armenians from that area. They, they actually hated the French as much as the Turks, I heard. More. And, uh, right? More. More. Because they, in the middle of the night, they left the Armenian population. More. Now, there was a rivalry between the British and the French after World War I, and can you comment on that? I don't know a lot about it, but I know that they, there was a rivalry that seemed to come more into play after the war, now that they were no longer allies in the war. Yeah, um, the question was pertaining to Anglo-French imperial rivalry in uh, Cilicia, and also you know, ar around the issue of the, op the, the occupation of that area in the immediate aftermath of the First World War, and the gradually differing British and French agendas. Well, you know, you've, you, you've got it right. There's, I mean, th that, that imperial enmity is always there, the imperial competition. It's more or less kept at bay here in the war, but you know the, the whole dynamic of the late Ottoman Empire really is a question of all of the European powers trying to work out their orientation toward you know what happens when the Ottoman Empire falls apart. I mean, essentially, the wartime plans for the division of, of the Ottoman Empire, the Sykes Picot, Southern Ottoman etc. Those are really you know just an intensification of those long-established concerns. You know, how do we? divide up the Ottoman Empire and cause minimal friction amongst us as, as, as a great power collective. So, you know, although Britain and France are in a wartime alliance, some of the ongoing factors of them being imperial competitors are still there. And as soon as the war's finished, you know, those, you know, those, that, that, those differences re-emerge. And um, France, I think, opportunistically sees very earlier in the day that Britain, that it can, uh, come to terms with, um, with Turkey, perhaps because it has less of a historical investment there in any case, but also because it sees it as a useful way to kind of, I, th I think, probably partly undermine Britain. You know, France pulls out of the idea of you know, supporting the, the ongoing Greek occupation, and certainly the Greek thrust into Anatolia in 21, which is a catastrophic move anyway. Um, the, you know, the French have, have kind of, you know, given up that, and you know, are coming to terms, and you know, and, and, and then, you know, the, the the way in which they pull out of Cilicia and Marash, you know, during that time, is just an expression, a very opportunistic expression of, of the larger opportunistic moves that go around that, that post-war settlement. Thank this you. might be a good time for me to ask everyone to turn off their cell phones during yeah. tonight's lecture. <laughs> 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 ah, better late than never. Okay, a couple, couple more and then we'll, we'll cut it off. Yes. Uh, one question. Um, you mentioned back in 18, uh, anyway, the international treaties when the Armenian requests or desires were internationalized, I suppose at that point, mm -hmm. um, and that Turkey took some, I guess, insult from that, so to speak. Um, and that what I'm drawing from this is that we were basically victims of circumstance that Turkey was trying to secure its country, its safety, and yet, but the Armenians somehow gained international level of, of whatever, um, and that jeopardized the Armenians. Is that safe to say that Turkey was trying to secure its country yes. because of this element that had the possibility of maybe creating problems, or it looked like it might create yes. problems? So that, in essence, when Turkey accuses Armenians and saying, well, you were becoming revolutionary and rebellious, that's what, I mean, they actually use that as one of the reasons that they did the mass murders. Yes, the, the, the question was, apropos of my discussion of this internationalization,